heroes. Um, today's video is going to focus on using tuners while we're practicing. So the specific tuner that I have pulled up for us today is the um, Tonal Energy Tuner. So it's an app you can download on a, I believe it's on the, the Apple App Store. I'm not sure what other stores it's on. It was about $4 when I bought it. Um, much cheaper one than a standalone tuner, which would cost you like 20, 30 bucks. Okay. Um, but great app can be used in a lot of different various ways. So I'll actually have a couple videos breaking down the different functions of this tuner, um, and metronome and drone maker and recording, um, platform. So it can do quite a few things, but today we're focused on the tuner aspect. And now what I'm going to teach you about tuning is applicable to any tuner that you're using, whether it be on your computer or phone or standalone tuner. So, um, Let's get going. So uh, first I'm gonna show you how to actually understand what's going on when you're looking at your tuner. Okay, so the what you see and keep seeing flash up while I'm talking, um, there's a middle circle that has the face on it and then there's, it's either showing highlighting the bottom of the circle or flat or the top part of the circle for sharp. Okay, so if you get the big green smiley face in the middle, that means that you're in tune. So it's flashing all over the place because it's registering my voice as all kinds of different pitches. And when I start playing a consistent and steady pitch, then it will be just steady. So let's um, let's just give you an example so you can see what's going on. Whatever note shows up on the right hand side, that will be your concert pitch. So to give an example, saxophones, if you played your G, it would show up as B flat. Clarinets, if you played your C, it would show up as B flat. Okay, so it's going to show up in concert pitch. So don't be confused by that. Um, so, but the next step is to actually talk about how to use it while you're practicing. Because one of the things that I've realized is that that this gets done so wrong so infrequently. So let's talk about that real quick. So when you're practicing and you're using a tuner, you can actually get everything out of place if you're sitting there staring at the tuner the whole time that you're actually tuning. Okay, so that's not what you want to do. What you want to do, you want to focus on getting as pure a tone as possible without even looking at the tuner. I tell my students to close their eyes. Don't even look at the tuner um, because that's going to that's going to mess you up. And why does that mess you up? It messes you up because what you do, you start to manipulate the pitch with your embouchure, with this little portion of your lips right here. And when you do that, then you don't get as pure of a sound. You may get the green smiley face, but if your sound isn't pure, what's the point? An in tune bad sound is a is a bad sound. Um, so you don't want to do that. So make sure that you don't manipulate with your lips. Right now, when we're tuning, especially to tune the instrument, you want to get the pipes in the right place. Okay, so you want to, if you're a, um, you know, depending on your instrument, you'll adjust different parts of your instrument. Um, but in general, brass players especially, you're going to be adjusting your tuning slot. Okay? So that's what the main focus is right now. Okay, now one more note to be said on, um, on tuning before we actually give some examples. Okay, if you're flat, or sorry, if you're cold, if your instrument is cold, if you just got it out of the case, okay, it's gonna be flat. It's gonna be flatter than it should be. Okay, if you're in a really hot environment, if you're playing outside, especially marching band, it's gonna be sharp, okay? So please make sure that you're aware of the pitch tendencies with the temperature fluctuations and variations that you may be playing in as well. So I wouldn't pick it up out of the case first thing and tune a cold instrument because that's not gonna be accurate after you actually start putting air through your instrument over the course of a practice session or a rehearsal. So, so again, let's, um, let's tune. So let's say we're gonna tune a B flat, okay? So if I was gonna tune a B flat, what I would want to do first is just to close my eyes, play a note, and just try to get the best possible sound that I can even think of, that I can imagine in my head. Now, about three to four seconds after I initialize that tone, then, I want to open my eyes and look at the tuner. Now, what what I see on the tuner will then 
be what I will do and what I will change um, with with my tuning slides. So not with the embouchure, okay, but with the tuning slides. And, and just, just for the reminder, trombone players, um, make sure that when you tune your first position that it's not all the way in. You don't want to tune it all the way in because your fifth partial will not have anywhere to go then when it needs to be brought in. So make sure that you're, uh, you're not tuning all the way in, but that your B flat, your in tune first position is a little bit out. Okay, not very far, but just a little bit so you can tune in later. Okay, so let's tune and let's focus on the B flat. So again, I'm going to start with my eyes closed. I'm going to play for about three or four seconds and then open them and then make an adjustment. That will be what we do. Here we go. Ten to fifteen cents flat. Okay. And now, what do you do if your instrument is flat? And if your instrument is flat, whatever your tuning adjustment is, you push in. Okay. It's flat. You push in because you're. I like to think about it this way: the longer the instrument is, the lower it is. And so, if it's low, if it's too low because it's flat, you want to push in or make it smaller. You want the instrument to be smaller. Likewise, if it's sharp. Okay, you're going to want to pull out because the smaller it is, the higher pitch it is, and you want to make it lower, which means you need to elongate, create the longer instrument, and pull out your tuning slide or whatever your adjustment is, whether it be mouthpiece or barrel or anything like that. So, so that is, in a nutshell, how to tune your instrument and to how to work through that process in a way that's not going to mess up your sound while you're practicing.